I'm your host, Rick Jay, with two very unique guests today. Uh, metal artist, Susie Acree Rogers of Show Me Gold and Silver, Jefferson City and O'Fallon, Missouri. And a watercolor artist who's gaining quite a, a, a fame, shall we say, across the states. That's Mr. Gary Kala Wallader of Warrensburg, Missouri both recognized uh, for their fine artworks. Well, please join me then first in welcoming artist and promoter Suzer, Susie, I beg your pardon, Susie Cree Rogers of Jefferson City, Missouri. Uh, please tell us a little bit about uh, you and those highlights of your life that best describe uh, Susie uh, Cree Rogers, if you would. I'd be happy to. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I was uh, born in Jefferson City, Missouri. I've always lived around this area. This year I'll be married for 20 years. I wow. have a 16-year-old son. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Um, I have been a Best Missouri Juried Hands artist for 12 years. Oh, super. I have a degree from William Woods University. And at this point, my brother, Mike Acri, and myself have two jewelry stores, one in Jefferson City, Missouri, it's called Show Me Gold and Silver at the Jefferson City Capitol Mall and also Radiant Jewelry in O'Fallon, Missouri. Awesome, awesome. Well, can you share with us, um, Ms. Rogers, uh, how you were first uh, in, uh, inspired to become a metal artist? Well, absolutely. I've always loved art. I, I love to create things. Uh, in the early 90s, I went to the Jefferson City Capitol Mall to the jeweler's workbench to get a ring repaired. I see. And I inquired about learning how to repair jewelry. And I mentioned I'd like to go to Paris College in Texas. And they said, oh no, you should really become an apprentice and learn hands-on. So I became an apprentice uh, at that jewelry store and I learned all facets of jewelry repair. And from that point on, I thought, you know, if I can fix it, I bet I can make it. So I just started designing from that point forward. Excellent. And are those folks still in business? Uh, still someone to look up to in this uh, field? No, actually, it has come full circle. Their business is no longer open, but the owner of the place that hired me over 20 years ago, she now does appraisals for my store in Jefferson City Capital Mall. Oh, excellent. Would you like to give the, our viewers her name, uh, give her some credit? Yes, her name's Kathy Jones. Kathy Jones. Mm -hmm. yeah, I Super. worked with uh, Richard Jones and also Keith Jones. Super. That's, uh, that's awesome. Well, if I may, uh, Susie, call you by your first name. Sure. Uh, what is your favorite material to work with and, and why? Oh, my favorite material. There are so many materials to make jewelry with. I love gold. I love silver. Don't we all? <laughs> I love, right? I love, uh, I love turquoise. I love faceted stones. And that's why I love what I do, because uh, I never do the same thing twice. And if you get a chance to look on my Show Me Gold and Silver Facebook page, you'll see so many different pieces of jewelry. And I just, I love doing it. It's not repetitive. <laughs> right. And yes, I have looked at your website and very impressed. Her, her artwork, should we say, and uh, as a metal artist, is, uh, speaks well for her. Uh, so I want to compliment you on Thank that. Thank you so uh, much. And we met, I believe, uh, a few years ago and talked to art uh, as far as metal, mm -hmm. uh, the artist, uh, artistic um, uh, things that you have done. And you are uh, still a part of that. Um, uh, meet and greet, uh, should we say, the call to nature's art at the Run Center now on exhibit. That's quite So I invite honor. everyone to still, before June 30th, get over to the Runge Conservation uh, Nature Center here in Jefferson City and take a look at a beautiful piece that she's encased in glass for your viewership. Um, 
Well, do you have any favorite pieces that you'd like uh, to share with us that you'd like to identify and that are close to you, that are your favorites, sure. should we say? Uh, <clears throat> I have taken silver spoons and forks and recycled them into jewelry. I've taken a spoon and made it into a guitar. Oh, I've done that. acoustic guitars, I've done electric guitars, I've done fiddles. One piece was a 14 and a half carat ruby that I hand carved out of wax and I cast in 14 karat yellow gold for a client of ours. That was a fun piece to do. Oh. Um, there's, there's so many pieces. I've cast flower jewelry out of natural flowers that I've picked up on the side of the road. Oh I've also hand carved flowers out of wax. I can't really say I have a favorite piece. I love them all. <laughs> oh, I know my paintings, I've become partial to everyone because they're about me and what's inside and what comes out. And that's the way it, I get it. it is with so many artists naturally. Uh, to just create a piece just for the fun of it, I guess, is one thing. But mm -hmm. most of the time, you, we have to reach in. Um, well, I, I'm just really anxious to uh, get on the website and see if you have any new pieces, because she does do excellent work. May I ask then where the viewers may view your works? Give that website if you can. And uh, naturally, you do take commissions uh, on work if you'd like to give us a, a way to contact you through a telephone or what have you. Absolutely. You can see my work at McAdams Limited in Columbia. Also at Radiant Jewelry O'Fallon, which is in O'Fallon, Missouri. And then also Show Me Gold and Silver at the Jefferson City Capitol Mall. Um, we are currently working on a website. We can be seen on Show Me Gold and Silver Facebook. Uh, we can be contacted at 573-896-5114. That's our store phone number. Okay, super. Now we have all the scoops, so you know where to get a hold of uh, uh, Susie and uh, naturally visit one of the sites there in O'Fallon or in, uh, at the capital city here in Jefferson City, Missouri. Well, can you tell me a, a gentle idea how your, a piece of your work, your artwork comes together, where it begins, and, and is it just something you comes to your mind like some paintings do to me or do you what what triggers that imagination what have you I feel like the pieces speak to me if I mm -hmm. have a piece of turquoise ah. I'll, I'll, I'll build around that piece of turquoise if I have a piece of silver I might hammer it I might shape it and it, it just kind of builds itself and that's kind of the beauty of what I do and um, should we say how long does it take to, for an average piece, or really a piece that you're really putting your heart and soul into. Uh, <laughs> is, is there any time frame that usually works for you? All the pieces are different. Um, if I'm doing a casting with the lost wax method, that takes easily from starting to carve the wax um, to the investing, the burnout, the finishing, that can take up to 18 hours. Oh and that wouldn't include setting the stones and, and sizing it, you know. But every piece is different. Well, I was thinking more like 18 days, uh, but I guess not. Uh, this, <laughs> so you must well, be uh, really um, uh, good at your techniques, what have you, different, uh, uh, I guess, phases of the uh, piece that you're putting together. I guess it would depend. Uh, I see. Well, when I say 18 hours, um, a lot of the, you can't just work straight through. Oh, I see. You, you do the carving, then you do the investing that has to cure. The burnout alone on a lost wax casting is four hours. Wow. So yeah. This for, I, I, and then you have to ramp down your heat, and then that's another two hours. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, it, it is time consuming. Time consuming. Yeah. Now, if someone was interested in, in becoming a metal artist, uh, what uh, words of inspiration would you want to uh, give to them here on the show today, if you have any? Stick to it. There's always a piece that someone's going to love. It is so rewarding to make something out of nothing. Um, 
I feel like my pieces are going to be here long after I'm not. And uh -huh. to me, that is such a wonderful thought, you know, because yes, uh -huh. I pour my heart and soul into each piece. And Excellent. And, and that, um, you, you've heard it directly from Susie, it's her heart and soul. Like all artists, we, we put a lot of time and heart, soul, and what, whatever we can pull in there to that mix to really complete a piece that basically I guess we're satisfied with and hopefully someone uh, the eye of the beholder also enjoys that piece. So uh, that's that's really great to hear. Well, Ms. Cree Rogers, on behalf of JCTV, Mid-Missouri Art News, I, I want to thank you for sharing with us here on Mid-Missouri Art News, uh, JCTV. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Okay. Thank you again. After the break, we meet watercolor artist Gary Cadwallader of Warrensburg, Missouri who really will surely inspire you uh, to look deeper into his commitment to the world of art and share with you uh, some of his most recent awards and accomplishments. So stay with us, we'll be right back. University of Missouri will and has been hosting its annual Farmers Market Saturdays. It had begun April 21st and will end October 6, 2018. Times are from 8.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. at Dickinson's Research Facility, 1219 Chestnut Street, Jefferson City, Missouri. For more information, contact Maria Isabel Jacob. Welcome back to JCTV's Mid-Missouri Art News. I'm your host, Rick Jay. As we turn now to a well-known artist in the state of Missouri, Mr. Gary Cadwallader of Warrensburg, Warrensburg Missouri. Welcome, Mr. Cadwallader. <laughs> nice to be here. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Well, Gary, if I may call you by your first name, sure. it seems like we're... Uh, old friends all over yeah. <laughs> now, preparing for the show here in the past few weeks. 14 minutes is not long enough, um, uh, Gary, uh, really, in reality, to share that all, all that makes up your art world. So what we'll do is try to cover the highlights of those mm -hmm. experiences and invite you back uh, at a, another time. <laughs> well, I always like to start the first question off with, a little bit about, if you can, share with us a little bit about Mr. Gary Cadwallader, uh, your family, your past, and what have you. Okay. Um, I was born in Kansas City, and um, I was not what you would call the best artist in school, but uh, my grandmother was living with us, and about age 13, she bought me a... Uh, John Nagy learned to draw kit. You remember oh, those? Yes, I sure do. One of those great Saturday yes. mornings, he would come on, and if you could draw with a circle, a triangle, and a square, you could draw anything. Yes. Uh, well, he must have been right, because uh, from that start, I ended up going to UMKC, and I got an art degree. Um, I would have been 1972. Oh, wow. Uh -huh. So... Um, so that basically is uh, my next question would be, uh, what really was your first inspiration or what inspired you to become an artist? And 
And I guess I should say, well, what continues you now to continue being an artist there a few years later from that start date? Um, well, okay. So I was an art major, but I did not do anything with it because I was a, figured out I could program computers. I see. So there was paycheck every two weeks. Oh, <laughs> that makes sense. So I did that for about 35 years. Um, and then it would have been 2011 that I decided to give uh, painting a real, real go. I'm going to give it a real try. And by then I'd had heart attacks, stents, oh, bypasses. I'm, I'm sure you understand where I'm coming yes, from. Uh -huh. <laughs> People my age, we have all those things. And you start to think, my time is short. Yes. And so I really wanted to uh, start painting. And life circumstance, I ended up, the only paint I had in the house was an unopened box of watercolors and some cheap paper. So I started with that, um, thinking that would be easy. And I found out that it was not easy. It's not easy. <laughs> and what year would that have been a process? That would have been 2011. And uh, I, I remember thinking my exact thought was, I'm going to give painting a real try. I got up, searched the house, found some paper, started painting, and I was terrible, just the worst. But June of that year, I went down to uh, Springfield, saw Watercolor USA. It just opened my eyes. That was your m main idea. That was it. Your... It changed everything. Excellent. And since then, uh, I read so much now about uh, Gary uh, throughout the state at different events. And recently, he has been honored with a uh, position as a board member with the uh, Watercolor Honor Society out of Springfield. Would you like to tell us a little bit of what, about that as a board member, what you're going to be doing? And sure. Again, uh, the, your, your, should we say, your steps to, that uh, led up to such an offer, an honor. Okay. Well, um, I got, it took me a while. I, when I saw Watercolor USA, my first thought was, I want to show with these guys. These yes. are great. Uh -huh. And um, it took a while. It took a while. I think I was turned down the first four or five years in a row. But finally, uh, last year, I got two paintings in there, and one of them won an award, and that's enough to get you into the Watercolor Honor Society. And then I talked to Lauren McCracken, who needed a, uh, a newsletter editor. And I've been doing the newsletter in Warrensburg for our little art group. Yes. And so I volunteered for that, and um, I'm one of the two new board members. The other one is a, uh, a lady that I've forgotten her name, I'm sorry, but uh, she will be putting together classes that they are going to teach in Springfield, hopefully with a top-of-the-line artist uh, like John Salmon or something like that to Excellent. come down and give yes. oh. workshops. Oh, that sounds super. Now, you mentioned Lauren McCracken, mm -hmm. which has been with the, uh, the uh, Society for years. And there's another young lady that you uh, mentioned earlier in the day Yes, Norma Herring. Norma Herring. So we want to say hi to those folks and, and, and uh, the board members and what have you. That society uh, is very well spoken of. Uh, Mr. Larry Carver is watercolor artist, has been on the program. Jerry Thomas, um, Ron Furkle, and there's more li to be listed. Mm -hmm. and it's such a, uh, the, the artwork that's coming from these individuals with this this inspiration that coming from the Watercolor Society. We're hoping to get one of the individuals um, uh, back on the show along with, uh, like I said earlier, uh, Mr. Gary. Well, Gary, uh, say, what is your favorite medium? Now, watercolor to me, you can water it down, you can use it, what is anti-postalism? <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, well, okay. Uh, my favorites are watercolor and acrylic. Oh, I see. And um, people accuse me of making my watercolors that look like oil paint because I put it on there pretty thick. That's what I like. <laughs> I like your style. I've seen it. He's at the, also at the Runge uh, Conservation Nature Center. That's one of the 52 artists on display there. 
And I, I, when I see I saw his work, I do do oils mainly personally, so I do like the thickness. But it still is amazing how some of the watercolor artists just seem like to mix up a little water with some color in it, and it comes out fantastic. So, yeah. oh, I, I like your style, and your <laughs> art speaks well for you, Mr. Oh, Green. Thank you. Um, so, can you? Would you like to describe some of your favorite completed projects? It seems like we all have a personal few favorites. Sure. Uh, please go ahead and let us know. Uh, so we'll be bringing those up, editing them into the program okay. as you speak about them. Uh, okay. I want to. I, I first one I'm going to mention is called Abundance Two. Um, okay. And the reason I like that one is because it's the first one that made any real award money. You know how you you get twenty five dollars or fifty dollars. Maybe you get a hundred dollars. Well, yes. that was got best in show at the Missouri Watercolor Society member show, and it was enough to buy new tires for my van. Excellent. So I went out and bought them the next day before they could change their mind. <laughs> that's that's a good move. <laughs> I guess that's like twenty five dollars. <laughs> yeah, no, it wasn't. It was a good price. Plus, that made me the judge for the following year. Oh, so they paid me to be the judge and put me up in a hotel and paid all my meals and mm -hmm. it was a good deal. Excellent. Um, then I had the, I had an acrylic that I really liked. I called it Refuge, and it's very large. It's 48 by 60, so four by five feet. Yes. Um, it got $700 award at the state fair plus the purchase price, so that doubled up on I the do money. recall that piece at oh, the State Fair. Thank so. you. That's hanging in the president's office at the State Fair Community College. Oh, oh that's right. I did visit there next to the Dom Center. I yes. I visited. It's, it's there, yes. I had forgotten about that. But <laughs> I was there about four weeks ago. And oh, but, yeah. So you saw it. Then. Yes, I saw it. It's mm -hmm. a beautiful piece. Very uh, well done. Yes. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that started a whole set of acrylics that I've been doing that I call Refuge, where you are you feel like you're in a protected place, looking out at the world. Um, I had another acrylic that I really like, uh, that uh, the uh, Ashby Hodge Gallery of American Art. Oh, uh, yes. You know, Joe, Ga Joe Ga Geist, sorry. Geist, yeah. Yeah, and Denise Haskamp up there. Mm -hmm. They bought that for the, uh, for, for the gallery. And um, I called that one uh, Before the Earth Was Flat. It's kind of play on words because I'm I was working with very flat pieces of color and then very three dimensional objects oh, as well. See. So you, your your medium um, subject matter is varied. I noticed too that you just don't do uh, landscapes. You do uh, yeah. I would say mostly florals. Florals, yes. Because florals give you a lot of ability to put an abstracted feel to your painting. Well, I want to thank you once again for uh, being part of the Call to Nature's Art there at the Run Center, at JCTV, and myself sponsoring it. Um, and your artwork is appearing at many places. Uh, we both hope to be in the top 50 at the Missouri mm -hmm. State Fair hope to. with our pieces. Um, I definitely re admire your work recently, even at the Jefferson City Art Club uh, art exhibit. And uh, I do recall, um, I think you're also with the SVAA yes. uh, in Sedalia, Miss uh, Rebecca Limbach and mm -hmm. Linda, Linda Hoover. Uh, Hoover and mm -hmm. Glenda Miller mm -hmm. is uh, part of that, and they've been with us. So well, is there any place right now that you'd like to promote that you're going to be at so people can come and take a look? Uh, the biggest one will be Powell Gardens mm -hmm. um, on 50 Highway there. And I'll be there with a second person. So the two of us will show August 19th through October 28th. Super. We will fill that place up. Great. And I want to put that on my calendar. <laughs> That's at the Powell Gardens. Yes. Okay. Do you have a website so the folks or email address or phone number where sure. someone would like to commission a work from you or at least share your work? Sure. Can you uh, give that to us? Yes. Uh, my website is very simple, www.garypaints.com. And uh, email is just gary at garypaints with an S dot com. All right. Super. Was there anything we'd like to share with us uh, as far as an inspiration for a new artist or what have you, 
uh, within the art community. Uh, leave oh. us with a few words of. Uh, just, I, I would say, just don't ever give up. Or, I mean, if an old codger like me can, you know, do some damage, certainly a young person can. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. And just, just keep trying. Well, Mr. Cadwallader, on behalf of the JCTV, Mid Missouri Art News, which is attempting to bring uh, together all art lovers across Missouri and, and the different states. Uh, and uh, through this program, uh, I want to thank you so much for contributing to Mid-Missouri Art News, making a learning and informational experience for all. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was an honor. Thank you uh, for viewers, our viewers, um, uh, taking a look. Next here on Mid-Missouri Art News is Kathleen Stroop of Jefferson City, Missouri. You've probably heard of Kathleen. And uh, that taping is scheduled for September 19th, uh, 2018. And next on uh, Spotlight on the Arts, uh, we have, again, invited artist Ron Ferkel back with us from Washington, Missouri. Ron will be sharing some more of his fantastic art pieces and Art Secrets, he promises to share with us. That taping is scheduled for next month, July the 11th. Thank you, JCTV uh, producer, Glory Enlou, Enlou, beg your pardon, and the crew, and thank you, our viewers, for watching. Look for more Mid-Missouri Art News right here on JCTV. And don't forget YouTube. I'm Rick J. Singh. See you next time.